Hello there all, welcome to Yosakro. This video is going to be a short tutorial on texturing with a Nuke and Photoshop. This is basically an accompanying video to the previous tutorial on tracking and projection texturing in which I did procedural network to create a texture whereas in this tutorial I'm going to go ahead and do a simple Photoshop texture which can be applied on the object instead. So let's get started. Now to get started, what we have done in the previous tutorial is generate this texture using only nodes available within Nuke. So I've used a couple of noises, rotor paints and grades to generate the whole texture and it gave me this result. But this method kind of gets complicated for people so therefore what I'm going to do is replace this entire section with a particular texture which I find let's say a photograph from online where I can replace the whole thing with some stitchings. So. Uh, what I've done is gone ahead, replicate this entire composite once more over here where I can go ahead and do the entire composite uh, with a new texture and connect it to my actual big mesh. So here if I connect to the final output, you should be able to see that there is no result because there is no texture applied to my actual object. So let's go ahead and look for a scar or a cut or something as such which can be applied on top. So to look for this image, I'll go ahead and search on Google. So now I'm in my browser, let me go ahead and put it on for image search and I want to search for something like scars, wounds, cuts, stitching or bleeding or things related to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and start typing in cut skin and before you hit enter please make sure that you're searching on an empty stomach. Now once all the gory images come in you can start picking out exactly what kind you want. But obviously, first thing to note for all artists out there, you can't just start copying images off the internet. So you need to go, go through the proper copyright channels. So therefore you can't just go ahead and start ripping these images off. That is one of the major reasons that I have blurred out the screen too. Now, the proper way to search for these images would be to go ahead to the Google Advanced Image Search. You can just go ahead and Google for it and you'll get that. The main reason for using this Google Advanced Image Search is that it allows you to actually search for Creative Commons images. So therefore, you can actually make use of this search to get images which are free to use commercially. So I'll go ahead and set that up and I can just tell search for something like scars, wounds, cuts, stitching, bleeding or anything I have and I'll just click advanced search and immediately I start getting a few results and as you can see all these images which have appeared now are actually labeled for creative or commercial reuse with modification so let's say I like this image which I see here and as you can see it's from Commons Wikimedia. So therefore this image is from Wikimedia. I'll go ahead and click view this image. So I have this image at full resolution and it's a pretty decent resolution. I can easily make use of this. I'll go right click on this image and I'll copy this image. So done. I have my image ready. I'll put this in Photoshop and start working now. One quick note before I actually jump into Photoshop. If you are actually looking for images, uh, you don't always have to look for a Google Creative Commons search because you might not actually get as many results. So in such a case, you might actually have to buy an image from a photographer or have to go ahead and take one of your own. If not that, you can also look for other uh, resources you have online like uh, the Flickr Advanced Search which gives you the same Creative Commons license and also you can go to DeviantArt, look for images you want and ask the author whether if you can make use of it in your own work. So obviously there are loads of methods and the best one is always to take your own pictures. So let's go now to Photoshop and actually start working. Okay so now I'm here within Photoshop. Let me go ahead and create a new document and because I've actually copied the image from my browser into my clipboard, you can see the preset is already set to clipboard with the actual height and width of the original image. Now, the only thing I'm going to change is the background content. I want it to be transparent so I don't have to work with some additional background which I have to remove. Now, I'll just go ahead, click OK. So I have this blank canvas. I can press Ctrl V or go to Edit and click Paste. So I got my image into my Photoshop canvas. Now, before I can actually make use of this image with a nuke, there are two main things I need to take care of. 
first off I need to apply a transparency map onto this image so that I can actually make use of only the scar tissue and not the skin because obviously this skin looks more like it belongs to the hand rather than the forehead next thing is I'll have to place this image or the pixels of this scar tissue or the stitches exactly on the position where I want on the forehead so first off to position it on the forehead properly I need an image from Nuke which tells me where this has to go next I need to create a mat on this image itself which gives me only the scar tissue so let's go first into Nuke and take a render of only the forehead from the projection cam to know where to place this texture so what I actually want from Nuke now is to see exactly what the projections cam is seeing. So if I go ahead and set this, set my viewer to the projection cam, you should be able to see exactly what it's looking at. And if I turn on the object, you should see exactly where it is. So this is my view which I want to be rendered. But as you can see, if I just have my object flat out, I really can't see what's happening. So therefore, if I could, let's say, go ahead and apply the original footage on top of this forehead, then I'll be able to see exactly what's happening. So to do this, what I'll do is go ahead and reproject the texture of the original footage back onto the mesh. So for that, I'll go ahead reconnect the track cam onto the projection 3D node and the corrected footage back again so I actually have the forehead projected so now if you if whatever frame I go to you will be able to see that the forehead is actually plain, plainly visible on this mesh so now what I want to do is go ahead and render this out using the projection cam so if I go to my scanline renderer which I have connected here on the side you should be able to see that I only have the forehead region and also if I go to my alpha channel you should see that the 3d object is giving me an alpha so now this is the image I want within Photoshop so that I can go ahead and put the new scar tissue I have on top of this forehead so let's go ahead I'll go ahead and connect a right node onto the scanline renderer I'll write this out and open this image out in Photoshop so I've gone ahead and rendered this simple UV uh, image which has alpha channel it's a PNG image so I got this simple one I want to bring this into Photoshop so let me go ahead and open this in Photoshop so I have it here now what I'm going to do is take this image which I have here and put that in to this so let's go ahead uh, control A copy this and over here I'll go ahead edit and paste so I got this image the first thing I want to do is maintain as much quality as possible if I want to edit it later so for that reason I'll just go ahead right click on this and I'll tell convert to smart object okay that's kind of clipped out of screen so let me just pull that out a bit okay so as you can see I have convert to smart object I'll convert this layer into a smart object what that means is if I go ahead and reduce the size and then again some other time I decide I had to increase the size the quality of the image is still maintained it's not lost so that is what smart objects basically mean so let me go ahead I'll just uh, reduce the size I'll place it somewhere obviously the scar is too big so let me place it somewhere over there okay now as you can see the skin tone do not match and there are loads of issues but first thing I want to do is go ahead levelize this so I'll go ahead and add in a levels layer on top of the smart object I'll link it only to this layer itself I'll hit auto on top of this so I get a bit more variation in the actual levels now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and edit the alpha channel on this so that it gives me a cutout on top so to do that what I can do is right click on this uh, layer and tell I want to edit contents so just give me a warning I'll hit OK so it gives me this new uh, PSB file where I can go ahead and create a mat and that will show me the results on here so basically I can go ahead and start editing it over here so what I'll first do is I want to create a proper mat which I can use to cut this out so if I go ahead to the channels I can go to the red channel you can see the blacks are basically the regions I want and the whites are the ones I want to ignore next if I go to green the same thing is there but it's a bit more enhanced and if I go to the blue you can see a bit more of the same detail is maintained so I'm just going to go ahead and control click on the blue channel so that all of it is being copied 
and back to the RGB I'll select my whole layer and click mask this basically creates a mask but it's exactly the reverse of the mask which I want so selecting the mask I'll click invert so this creates an invert mask and as you can see here whatever is white is the portion I need and whatever is black is a portion which I don't now what I'll first start is by levelizing this I'll just go to levels and I'll bring my values in a bit so that okay so I have it there next I want to get rid of all these harsh edges on the corners so I'll just take my brush and a few settings on my brush it's uh, not a default round brush it's almost about 400 plus pixels and also if I go to my brush settings you can see I've turned on a few shape dynamics it's uh, has a tip shape something like this is a 27 pixel brush which I have I've gone ahead and used angle jitter so that it does not give me a straighted line and also I've turned on scattering just a little bit so that it does not give me a very default output so once I have all these results I can go ahead and start removing the corners of this whole output so I'm just removing these details okay so I got rid of the, all the edges but I also want to get rid of a bit of the skin in the center but I can't really do that uh, so easily so what I'll do is again turn off the mask I'll come out of it and disable the mask come to the channels let's say I go to the blue channel this time and disable the rest just go to the blue channel I'll control click on this so I have the entire channel selected now I can go to the quick mask Control shift L so that I have it auto levelized once more and I'll invert it so that I can oh, okay sorry I don't have to invert it I'll come back out and back to my mask I can go ahead and start removing it wherever I think it's too much so basically what I'm doing right now is removing uh, additional skin details which I don't really want also I can go back to the mask and in the center where a lot of detail has been lost I can add it back in using the white color so I can just go ahead and paint this all back in so let me just add in a little bit of that and I'll hit save once so this image is saved and now I can come back to my actual UV layout and you can see exactly what's happening as you can see the saturation is a bit too much on this layer I'll just turn this off so that improves it a bit and also the amount of detail in the center is lost so I'll go ahead and start editing it I'll go ahead and fast forward the video for a while so you can actually see what's uh, happening okay so I've gone ahead and created this uh, it's not exactly perfect but uh, that is what I get for a five minute work so I've gone ahead and created this texture what I've done is created two different mats each one giving in a different amount of detail I use the different channels R G and B to help me create the different masks too so I got this result here what I'll just do is go ahead turn off the actual image which I have rendered out so this is my image which I have now which I can apply as you can see there is a lot of wasted space or uh, basically a lot of wasted um, file size in other way in other words but it doesn't really matter because it's a single image plus it's just a PNG image which I need to save out so it doesn't really matter so I can go ahead save this open it up in nuke and start projecting and it'll work right out of the bat so let's go ahead I'll save this and open it in nuke and get back to you so here now I'm in nuke let me go ahead and read in the new PNG image I just saved out I've saved it as the ACK UV underscore 2 PNG over here I'll just uh, go ahead and open it up as you can see it's almost 16 MB in size and when I open it up the first thing you notice is that it's unpre multiplied meaning the RGBA values have not been pre multiplied by the alpha so first thing I'll do is go ahead and pre mult it so pre mult so I get this uh, result here as you can see it's not exactly the best result uh, this is not how it looked like in Photoshop so there might be few variations but it's okay now next thing obviously I need to go ahead and project it onto the object once more so I'm going to go ahead reconnect the camera to the projection cam and disconnect the original texture and connect the new one which I've just bought in from Photoshop so now if I go to my 3d baked object you can see that it actually has this 
texture applied on top of it. Now at the edges you can see that you can make out a little bit of the alpha. The main reason for that is uh, um, the way Nuke handles a bit of the alpha channel. It doesn't really matter because you can't really see it. If you want to be sure that uh, you don't get any edges, you can go back into Photoshop and make sure the alpha channel is perfectly black on all sides on the edges within your actual texture itself. So I don't really care about it right now. So let's come back here. I'll go check out the final result I'm getting here from the texture on the object. So this is the object texture. If I render it out, it's going to give me this on the object and if you see through you can see that it's actually moving according to the head. Now I want it to be applied on the head but if I come to the actual merge channel and just go to the, let's say the final result I have here you can see it looks horrible. The first thing the reason for that is after the scanline renderer I have added a color correct which is actually increasing the saturation. This is what I had done for the previous texture which we had here so I don't really need that saturation this time so I'll just go ahead instead desaturate the entire texture so it's actually darker so it fits in nicely with the actual skin tones so now if I actually go to the final result you can see it matches in quite nicely and also the few things I have edited here or changed uh, first off I have this multiply blend mode which just uh, darkens the entire thing a little bit mainly causing a bit of bruising or let's say color variations on the skin uh, which is very subtle uh, you can see it's just 0 0.325 blend mode. Next I have this overlay which is actually adding in the details. So you can see this is the one which is doing majority of the work. Next I've gone ahead color corrected this and then I can go ahead and write it out. And uh, pretty much that's it. All I've done is created a texture, reprojected using the old, same old camera. The only thing is this texture which I've created, I've used this projection cam as a rendering object and use that as my UV layout. And now I can go ahead, go hit back. I've just turned off the lock on the viewport so that the viewports are not synced or the viewers are not synced. I'll go hit play. And as you can see, the texture moves. It fits in perfectly. As long as your point cloud was nice or, or the, uh, as long as your point cloud was good and also the kind of uh, big mesh you get is good, this is going to match up perfectly. So pretty much that's it. Now uh, the next thing I want to show you is exactly how to optimize your textures. If I zoom in, you can see it's already quite pixelated. You can't really see a lot of details. So if your texture is not very high resolution, you might start seeing even more artifacts or issues. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can avoid such problems. So the first thing I've done here is that if I come to my 3D scene, you can see the camera is quite far off. Uh, the main reason is the mesh is entirely within view but I don't really need the entire mesh within view I only need the region which I need to texture within view so for that reason what I can actually do is I'll just go ahead I'll copy this camera I'll duplicate it keep it over here so let's go ahead this is the new cam I'll connect that as a new camera so that's what I'm looking at now I'll just move it closer <clears throat> and position it at a position or a place where the texture is supposed to be applied anyway. So I positioned it. Now if I go to my actual scanline renderer, you should be able to see that the entire texture is kind of skewed up. The main reason is I'm still looking at the same old camera texture. So I'll just move out this camera off to the side. This is no longer required. This is a new optimized camera. And obviously with a new camera, I need a new proper texture. So now you'll see and under, understand a bit about what I did with Photoshop. If you're getting confused, just replay a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and reproject using the same old camera here. I'm just redoing the uh, rendering part which we just did a while ago. So rendering using this camera. Okay, so as you can see, I've just gotten the forehead very close to the actual head. So once I have this, I'll go ahead, write this out. I'll put this as underscore A, let's say. I'll hit render. So it just goes ahead, renders out the single image that's done now I can go ahead to Photoshop I'll open that up so I have this new image opening this up over here all I need is the textures or the layers so let me hide these guys 
So these two layers are one with the levels and one with only the texture. So taking these two, I'll put them within this new file. Oops. Okay, so I have these over here. Now the main thing is, because I have made this entire layer a smart object, I can actually go ahead and transform it, basically maintaining all the details without losing any quality, and place it where I want, hit enter, close out the uh, original footage or whatever I have, and now I can go ahead, save this out, so save as, I'll save this as PNG, so let's just say I save this out as A2, obviously you need to follow proper naming conventions or else you'll be as confused as I'll be if I go through these files in a week. So I'll save this out, I'm changing the compression to be none because it's going to be a faster read, I'll save it out, now coming back into Nuke, I'll read this image, I'll bring in the A2, obviously I need to apply a pre mold on top of this. I'll connect that into my viewer and you should be able to see I have a larger image with much higher quality. Now this one is what I need to connect into my actual projection cam. So I'll reconnect my projection cam and texture. Done. Coming to my scanline renderer node you can see this is the actual result I have and coming to my render you can see the texture is actually quite higher resolution. I can see a bit more white details over here and coming to the final result this is what I have. So uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to do. So let me just briefly recap this because I know I confused you guys a little bit over here. So first off this uh, tutorial is an accompaniment to the previous tutorial on tracking which I have done. So in that tutorial I went ahead and created this texture which is completely within Nuke so it's kind of hard to understand. So what I'm doing in this tutorial is basically showing you how to project a texture which I've created in Photoshop. So if you're going to create a texture in Photoshop and apply it, you need an additional camera which is going to project that texture. You need that camera to be looking only at the texture and nothing else. So what I've done here just now is create a new camera pull it forward so that it's actually looking at only the texturing portion and nothing else so that your texture is not going to be applied anywhere else and then I'm going to use that projection camera to render out a new scene but project the actual footage itself on the mesh so that I know what's going to happen in the background that is going to help me with my UV layout so once I have that I create this file within Photoshop I use the smart object so I can redo the texturing or increase the quality at a different stage I went ahead rendered it out so it gave me this result color corrected it just a bit applied my blur and then finally rendered it out and composited it so it gives me this result so pretty much that's it uh, I showed you how exactly you can do some simple projection texturing using Photoshop in this video I really hope you guys found this useful I know I kind of uh, um, prattled on a bit too much and probably confused you so if you have any doubts or suggestions critics whatever they are put them in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you and obviously uh, anyone is always welcome to post your messages on Facebook or in the Facebook group and I'll get back to you there too so that's it for this video I really hope you guys found this video useful I'll see you in the next one